Hello everyone, this is Kyle from Pixelwave, and today we're going to talk about displacement. Now what is displacement? Displacement's the ability to push and pull a surface without actually having to model geometry. Um, here's an example from my Gumroad if you guys haven't checked it out already. Uh, playing around with uh, Substance Alchemist, I was able to create this kind of pebbled look. Now this is all just a texture, as some of you kind of know coming up in 3D we're really be able to push what, what is a texture and what is a 3D model anywhere, where that didn't used to, to be the case, at least when I was starting 3D. A lot of stuff had to be modeled or a lot of it was maybe uh, ZBrushed to get a bunch of detail. We had displacement, it's just not like it is today. There's so much more control. Um, let's grab another example of displacement. I found one here from uh, do, 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 real textures, real displacement textures.com. I mean, this is killer. This is what can be achieved now with just a texture. We're not having to go in and hand place or use something like force pack to scatter all of these. And if you guys haven't, I guess I'll give them a little shout out. Uh, real displacement textures, uh, rd dot or dash textures.com. These guys are killing it in the, the 3d scanning game of things. They've got some amazing textures. Uh, would really suggest checking them out. Um, and then something like uh, this guy here, uh, here we go. So the difference between, I guess, the pro to a displacement versus something like height or normal is we get this edge detail. So if you notice, let's see, get a good area, maybe up here, we notice this is actually coming off the surface. Uh, if I was just to place a bump or a normal map on this, the edge of this would still be flat. So it would look kind of nice in the center here, but then you just would get this circular flat kind of looking thing where when using displacement, we actually get edge definition or detail uh, because it's pushing and pulling our, our mesh. So let's kind of look at uh, an example of displacement here. Um, I've just got this cube. We just have a checkered map from uh, just a regular old node. Let's see, I had a camera set up. Uh, no, maybe I didn't. Okay, so if I hit render here, we'll take take a look at this. We're going to notice this mesh, which is just a plane, is being pushed and pulled. Now, white gets pushed to the top of an amount of displacement we specify. Black is the bottom of this amount that we specify, and we'll go over that. And actually, let's stop this so I can draw on this guy for us. So uh, this is the top of our displacement. White is always the top of the amount that we set for displacement. And black, you guys can't see it, but this guy actually, oops, just more or less doing this because the black area, it comes down. Uh, this is the bottom of our, of our displacement, black is. And again, we set the amount of how much it's displacing and it's the bottom of that value. Now what's in the center, what you would call, I guess more or less the water line they call it, is 50% gray. So 50% gray is not gonna get pushed or pulled. White is gonna get pushed and pulled, or pushed, I should say, uh, and black's gonna get pulled or vice versa, depending on uh, your map, or I guess what the detail is in that map. So let's look at it like a, a real world example of this in 3D. If I cut over here, that stopped. Okay. I got a camera set up for this guy. I know that for sure. So here's our plane. We have a V-Ray displacement node. I'll go ahead and I'm going to turn this off. I'll back up a little bit too, just so we can kind of see this. So again, actually, let me show you before I do. This is just a plane. And there's no information other than the texture that we've tossed on it. So if I go to render... And if you guys will see the edges because it has no displacement on it, you get the detail of the normal and the height map, but there's no edge detail. So if this was a sphere, you just would have this nice clean round edge where displacement's gonna give Sorry, us, displacement's gonna give us edge detail. So let's look at that. Let me turn this back on. And I've got let me zero this out. I've got some pretty crazy settings on here now, but I guess it'll be a good example. Uh, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. We'll turn it down and do some subtleties. So this is pretty, again, pretty gnarly. Uh, but you notice up here, I guess it's a good point. You notice the edge detail? It's no longer flat. 
So again, it's kind of faking some of this stuff. If this was maybe some ground butted up to a wall, you'd actually see it kind of cut up into that wall, uh, which just adds obviously more realism for us. Now, let's talk about how we create these maps. One way that I do it, let me back out of this here, is I sometimes just use height maps. Uh, if I need to, let's say I've got a PBR texture and I don't have a displacement texture. It's kind of, oh, it's, is it kind of jank? It's kind of jank. It's best to have a displacement texture from scan data or sculpted, uh, sculpted data, something like that. But sometimes like this, this was a chain mail that we'll get into later that was taken from substance source that didn't have displacement information built into it. Um, probably when someone created it in uh, designer. Uh, but it did have height information. So all I need to get a displacement map out, excuse me, are black and white values. Easiest way to do that is to toss a level adjustment on it and, and crunch these inward. Now, a lot of times I just click auto and it'll do that for me. And you get black again, which is getting pushed in and white, which is coming up. And this is virtually all you need for displacement. It's really this easy. So it's, I'll save this out. Now, sometimes uh, as you guys saw, the height information can sometimes be reversed or sometimes it's a little reversed or sometimes we have to reverse it, I would say. So maybe the height information looks like this. Now, if we look at it, this is getting pushed up and this is getting pushed down and the center, which would be sometimes controlled with an opacity map, uh, is getting pushed up. So that really doesn't make sense. So if they end up getting some weird issues with your displacement map, sometimes try inverting it. Uh, either in Photoshop or in Photoshop. If I remember, I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Um, or I'm sorry, in 3ds Max, we can reverse it or invert it. And that sometimes might help things. Um, other than that, I'm thinking ZBrush is kind of the only other way I know of that we can do displacement maps. So you'd end up putting your model in, sculpting the changes you want, um, and you can get a displacement map out of uh, ZBrush that way. Um, but jumping back into 3ds Max, what I did is I took this height map that I had and I'm using this for displacement data. Let's take a look at that map. I think I can pull it up here. Yeah, here it is for you guys. So let me cut this down to, to nobler just so you can see the map. Again, this is height information that we got. We don't have black values. So uh, this isn't gonna be of an extreme of a map as we would get if I tossed this into Photoshop uh, and, and got crushed, uh, I guess, the levels and got those black and white values. Um, but again, works. I just was able to pipe this in here. And actually, let's go ahead and do this. Let's set one up. So if I delete this, we have the toolbar uh, on the left here. There's this little, uh, I don't know what you look like. It looks like a virus of some sort. Click that. I know it's not a virus. Sorry, V-Ray. Don't hate me. Um, other alternative is if you've gotten rid of this, I know some people can it. Uh, if you go to create, no, modifiers, V-Ray, you can click on displacement mod there. And then all we have to do, if I can go back and find this map, uh, do, 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 do. nope, okay. So all we have to do is drag our map. Let's just say something like this, boom, pop it in here and we get a node. It just automatically pops that in for us. And then we can also, if we wanna see this or play with this node, which we need to do because we need to control the blur value, I'll go ahead and grab this and move this over and instance it uh, into the material slot. So any changes we make here will be made uh, in this slot on the right. So the big thing we're gonna mess with is amount. So from there, let's just say something reasonable, I would say is like three inches. Um, and then 2D mapping, you can set in the resolution. Obviously the larger of a resolution map you're gonna have, the more fine details we're gonna get. Sometimes we end up blurring them out, but I find that eh, it's always better to start with a higher resolution map. Now, um, I guess we can try this now. The blur I set down so you can see the map. I don't recommend this because it might end up looking kind of grainy. Let's just see what we get though. We can just play around with this for a second here. So it doesn't look too bad as far as a, a no blur on it. So you get these little details, but let's kick this up a little bit more. If I stop this, let's just do something like a foot. Go a little crazy with it. And I'll show you guys why sometimes I like to blur these maps. So without any blur, we get 
we get this like shelf looking thing and I don't necessarily care for it. It's not the look I was going for when exporting these maps out. So to fix this, what we can do is just stop this, is add some blur onto this map. So if I go something like mm, six and hit this again, we'll notice these uh, cliffs, I guess for you could say, kind of smoothen out and it looks a little more natural. It looks a little more like it's been untouched, smoothens some of that out. Now you can use this fil uh, filter blur here. I always just like to play with it in the bitmap itself and that always defaults to, to almost nothing. So I just find myself playing with this value more. Uh, you can use that too. So that, that's an option as well. Also, there's something called shift. Now, what this does is it shifts our displacement up or down. I know it's a little confusing. Since we're already kind of shifting or pushing and pulling things, let's just say that displacement pushes and pulls and shift shifts the, the entire push and pull up or down. Let's see if I can get an example of this for you here. So let's say uh, this is where we're at with one foot. If I was to shift this down a foot, it's gonna shift the entire push and pull down a foot. And if I click render, hopefully I can go back to the screenshot and you guys can see the difference. So if you notice this line here, boom, the whole thing drops down. Now this can be good for something like a wall if you have, let's say displacement for something like a brick wall, which we're gonna get into. When adding displacement, it's gonna shift it outward, but let's say it needs to be sitting, ah, eh, we'll show you, here. I hate talking about things. I just like showing you guys things. Okay, so we have this wall. When we have displacement on it, it's gonna get pushed out. And sometimes it gets pushed so far that it comes out from behind our pillars. Um, so you'd use shift to shift the entire push and pull back and allow you to keep it within the lines. So let's just say, let's just show this for example here. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a forward shift just to show you kind of what happens and then how we can correct it. So see how it's it's pushing through? Like sometimes this can happen without using shift. Sometimes this can happen by just using a mount. So actually let's try to get this to happen this way. So if I do something like this, so a plane, again using 2D mapping because it's uh, less expensive on memory. Don't know if I talked about that yet. 3D mapping is more expensive for RAM, 2D is less expensive. So if we can get away with using 2D mapping where if we don't have any corners, it's just a plane, always use 2D. 3D we'll get into, uses more RAM. Just beware, uh, we can crash our system by going nuts with 3D mapping. But let's look at this, watch. This is gonna displace out past these wood pillars. And then we have to, or we can, so see how it's shifted out, out of these pillars. I can use I can use shift to push this entire push. Sorry, I can use shift to push and pull this and push this back behind, push this whole displacement back further so it sits behind the wood. So if I just drag this down, let's drag it down an inch and a half per se. That should be enough. Let's see what that gives us. Yep. So again, look at still displacing through. So we just need to add a little more shift. So let's go back three inches. So it's shifting out almost four inches. Let's go back that amount and see if that fixes it. There you go. So look at this map. This is uh, from Substance Source. Um, it's just awesome, the loads of detail. Watch this, if I turn this off, the texture without displacement, it looks okay, it looks good. Like we don't need displacement on everything. Uh, again, it'll kill RAM, it just sucks up RAM like crazy. So if this is really far back, um, it could look okay. Uh, but if we were up close to it, we definitely wanna see displacement. So check this out, look at the difference on this. Let's see, turn that back on. Yeah, <laughs> look how much detail there is, how much more detail there is. We actually, it looks 
like geometry to some extent, which is killer. I love it. So anything else in 2D before I move to 3D? Talked about filter blur. I just use that in the material slot uh, or the node. I don't use it in, or here I would say, the amount of shift, so how crazy or how much displacement is going to be added, how much we're pushing and pulling as a whole. And then we can shift uh, the push and pull forward or backward, up and down uh, with this here. Now, let's see. What's next? Had another example. Is it 3D displacement? It is. So we run into a case where we have displacement that ends up turning a corner. At this case, we have to use 3D mapping uh, for the displacement itself. And let me show you guys just standard. So we have this on 3D mapping, our displacement map. This is actually from Real Displacement Textures. The displacement map is in there. We have um, about a four inch almost uh, displacement on this. And we have more settings down here. So edge length we'll get into and yeah, we'll get into the rest of this. So let's do a render of this. So, okay, you're wanting to set this up. You pop this on, you say 3D mapping. Great, this is what Kyle told us to do. And let's see what you get. This will, okay, great. No, not great, look at this seam. So this is this happens with when we're doing Displacement around corners, there's a really easy fix. Uh, but again, real displacement textures, uh, something you guys should check out. This is their brick texture they have. Um, I use the heck out of this thing in architectural visualization. It just looks so good. I love it. I love it, I love it. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and fix this seam. And how we do that is with this edge length. Oh, no, sorry, I lied. Keep con continuity. So if I click that on, we do this again. We're gonna go back to edge length. I said that because I was thinking about it. All right, boom, there you go. Now the hard thing is, is you just have to match the texture up. So it looks like, you know, the brick isn't like this. You get the brick kind of turning the corner. It's a different color brick on the side, but at a glance, far away, that, that looks great. I love the look of that. So let's talk about edge length. We don't have this option in 2D mapping. This is only a 3D mapping thing. And what that is, is when displacing, ha, ah, back to drawing time. Pull this up. When doing a 3D displacement, V-Ray takes this mesh, let's just say this brick, takes this brick and divides the heck out of it with tons of geometry, uh, which gives us all this detail. Now, each one of these edges, each one of these here, uh, sides of a polygon, let's say, uh, is like if we see this here, is four pixels, four pixels, four pixels, four pixels, four pixels, four pixels, four pixels. Um, the lower we go in this value, like if I was to go to two or one, each edge is only gonna be one pixel, which gives us tons of detail. So then it just is like boom, 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 and gives us you know these one pixel edges. Again, lots of detail. However, really RAM expense or really RAM expensive. Um, for the most part, I can leave a lot of our displacements at four, uh, and it looks fine. Like this looks totally cool. Looks awesome. It's not using a ton of RAM. It'll use a nice amount of RAM, um, but it's not going to kill your guys' system. If you go down to two, and it's almost exponential, uh, if you go down to two or one, um, you better have a lot of RAM, otherwise your file's crashing. Um, so an example, just to kind of see what this does, if I set this to something crazy, like let's say, let's just say 13 pixels is one edge and we render. It's gonna render faster because we're um, subdividing less, but look at the edge. The edge <laughs> kind of ends up getting a little wonky. It starts looking a little doughy. Like, look at this. Look at that little stupid line there. That stupid line there. So it still looks good. There's not as much detail. If you guys need to turn this up to save on RAM, again, not the end of the world, you're going to get, we're getting loads more detail than we would without this. Like, let's just look at that. Look how jank this is going to look. This is like straight out of 95 graphics. Look at those graphics, bro. I do 3D, bro. 
Yeah, look at that. So the difference, <laughs> the difference that makes is just stupid. It really is, you guys. I would encourage you guys to be playing with displacement. If you got to be jank and use a height map, there's just so much more detail that comes through in this kind of stuff. I see it a lot in other people's work. I try to encourage others to just try and play with it. Um, but that's pretty much it. The rest I keep, uh, aside from edge length and keep continuity, um, I just keep as is. Actually, I'll tell you a little tip. So let's say we want it or we have a corner in a house that's like a feature wall, it's brick. Don't you don't leave how do I say this? Don't leave faces that you're not gonna see in the camera. And I encourage this always with any 3D just because it saves time. So let's say I wanted to keep this camera angle. We're gonna see these faces. I'm not gonna see all this stuff behind here. I would go out and delete this. It's gonna save RAM when it has to compute the displacement. So then it's just having to compute these sides. You could end up probably going with a higher value on your edge length to get more detail out of it. Uh, if need be. So let's say you're at 13, you can delete these, you can then maybe drop this down to 10, you know, eight, something like that, and get more detail uh, out of that. So yeah, don't displace things, especially 3D that you don't need to be displacing um, to save on RAM. Uh, so what's next? Ooh, chain mail. Okay, cool. This water level feature here. Let's just show you again. I don't know why I talk about this stuff when I could show you this stuff. Ooh, I do need to show you, there is a light underneath here that we'll be able to see once we start using um, the water level. Um, but it's just so you guys know that's down there. Let's turn off lights. We'll go back to chain mail. Let's take a look at this. Does it have it on there? It's got it on there. We got 2D mapping because we're not doing 3D and it's got a little bit on there. 2048 is fine. Let's take a look at this chain mail. I really like this texture. I think it's killer. Again, substance source. Surprise, surprise. I like substance. Okay. Do you guys see that light down there? No. Why do we not see the light down there? Because it's a plane. We're just displacing a plane. But for something like this, let's say if this did not come with an opacity map, it does but let's say it doesn't. We can use what's called water level. And when you activate this, it takes whatever is, uh, I guess at zero, and it cuts it off. Um, and this is a great way to use this. So if I stop this and we say water level ticked on, it's gonna take what is at zero and cut it off and we can see through it. So this could be like a chain link fence. What else? Chain mail. Um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. Do you see that light down there now? So we can now see through this and it just cuts, you can add just a small value to cut off just the bottom and then you're able to see through this texture, which is cool, which is very cool. So I'm trying to think of what else. Maybe if you had some rocks or something on, let's say the water level, um, you wanted to cut off the texture below it, you could have rocks displace up through the water, uh, through another plane that looks like water, and then you can turn water level on and cut off everything below that displacement, actually using, <laughs> I guess, it with, with a water line itself. So um, that's really cool. Again, this texture, I just took the height map. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna toot my own horn. Um, just took the height map and did the levels adjustment. And that's all that this is. There you go. So I think we had one more. Yeah, the moon. Okay, I got really excited with this. Let me see if I can find this link. I'll put this down below uh, if I can get it in here. There we go. NASA released scan data of the moon. I don't know why this excites me. I love space stuff. So we have not only the color map, they also gave us this displacement map. You can download up to like 23K. It's crazy. You don't need all that information, but yeah. We able to set this up. The cool thing was, can I get back to it? Where are you, where are you moon? They set it up so that it just plops on a sphere. So literally all I did is took a sphere, tossed this on here um, using 3D mapping. Again, we don't wanna use 2D for this cause it's not a flat surface. And we just have subdivisions normal and didn't need keep continuity. Um, there might be a seam in this map. And if you could see the seam, you'd wanna kick that on. 
let's just take a look at this. I love it. It's awesome. I don't know. It's my childhood maybe coming out in me. But you guys can play with this data. I'll put a link in the description. I'll also try to put a link in the description of some of these materials. I know some of these I might not be able to distribute, but I can find one that uh, you guys would be able to play with, a full texture set. Um, but again, look at the, if, if I just turn this off and I can show you guys, we lose all this cool detail. Now, I think this texture map itself, if I go back, I did not end up blurring because I wanted all this cool micro detail. Oh, here it is. Oh, so we left that. So let's do something like a 0.5, see where that gets us. Yeah, so again, didn't blur. I wanted to see all this crispiness in the map because it looks cool, because it's the moon. All the little craters I love, I absolutely love. All right, so here's some other renders that I, I did kind of playing with these, these maps. All this is is a displacement map and uh, a diffuse map. You get loads amount of, uh, of a detail, which is just awesome. So you guys like and subscribe uh, if you enjoyed this video. It'll help, it'll help me out in the long run. Also, put down in the comments if I missed anything, if I screwed anything up. I know I'm not perfect. Um, might have missed something. I might have misspoke uh, or I'm just ignorant to something. Um, school all of us. Uh, I'd appreciate that. And or uh, if you guys have uh, uh, the idea for another video of something that might help you guys in your workflow, um, I want to try to do one that goes through modeling, texturing, modeling, UV and texturing. Um, something that's a little more lengthy, and then maybe even get into something like lighting theory. Uh, it's a little bigger than just kind of these uh, littler one-off videos, but um, toss it down in the comments. I appreciate it. Again, like, subscribe, uh, share. Uh, that would help me out a lot, and I'll see you guys in the next one.